I saw Ed's work long before I met him and was astonished by this photographer and had always been, you know, interested in art as a, a realm that is, it, it, it's, a, it's an arena that's fascinating because it's not reductive. You can't reduce art to a one-liner. Um, and I think reality is complex, which is a philosophical observation. And I think that art, perhaps more than anything, um, honors that complexity of, in life. So I've always been interested in, in visual art, and I loved Ed's work. Uh, but I didn't really think anything about it until Daniel Iron, who was then a producer at Rhombus, came to me and said, uh, there's all this black and white footage, um, and can you look at it? And it's of this photographer, Ed Butinsky. And I said, are you kidding? I would love to look at it. And my editor at the time, David Warnsby, and I went through, you know, I don't know, 200 hours of footage that a photographer who traveled with Ed took all of this footage of him in the Three Gorges Dam construction site in Bangladesh and the shipbreaking sites, but couldn't put it together into a film. And the question was, can you do this? And I said, well, I could use that in another film, but I would have to come and shoot you. And that's how Manufactured Landscape started. Manufactured Landscapes was such a rich experience for both of us and for Nick DePonsi, my husband, who's a cinematographer of Watermark. Um, we always wanted to do something afterwards. We had no idea that film would be received the way that it was. It was a meditative art film and, and somehow it resonated with people, and especially with young people. You know, I've taken it to high schools and universities and, and you know, people were sort of looking at the labels of what they're wearing when they came out of that screening and started to ask, what can we do? What can I do? I, I, all of a sudden I was in this position of, of, of being an activist um, around some of these issues. But we wanted to work together again and we, we just couldn't figure out what to do. He did an oil project. It didn't work. It was, you know, it was a, uh, it wasn't the right thing. And then he started on this water project, and came back from his first shoot in California with these photographs of the Sac Delta and uh, the Los Angeles Aqueduct. And we said, this may be it. This is it. This is our chance to do it together. And Ed wanted to participate more, and so we decided to co-direct this film. And it's been a really also very rich experience. I would say the film is more philosophically based than narratively based. It's not a story with a beginning, middle and end. It's like beads on a string that, that is, are tied together by this theme of human interaction with water and there are these little existential moments where you as a viewer get to you know, be in the rice paddies for a moment, or on the construction site of the Gilles Dam, or at the Kumela with 30 million other people taking a sacred bath. Like, they're little moments that, of places where you normally wouldn't go, normally wouldn't see. Uh, it was intended to kind of, the rhythm of it was intended to flow a bit like water. Those abalone farms were unbelievable because it was like a floating city in, in, in the middle of nowhere and um, thriving, probably one of the biggest aquaculture markets uh, or biggest aquaculture sort of areas in the world. And the rice paddies were equally revelatory because this is a totally sustainable form of agriculture slash aquaculture because in the winter they have fish growing in those ponds that has existed for thousands of years. And you look at them and think, well, why, why, don't, why don't we do that? Why the Imperial Valley that only exists for the grace of the Colorado River? You know, the Imperial Valley would be a desert without the Colorado River. So, um, and the Colorado R River no longer reaches the ocean. That's another story, the Colorado River Delta, which is a, a, a wasteland, a desert wasteland. For 40 years, it hasn't reached the ocean because we take so much off it for, um, all of our needs. Anyway, all of those stories are, could have been stories in themselves. I did a, an undergraduate degree in philosophy and theology, and then I, I went on and did a graduate degree in theology. 
um, sort of focusing on philosophical questions of, you know, epistemology and metaphysics and that kind of thing, and I, identity theories. And I, I realized when I was doing my master's that when I was writing my thesis that probably only three people would read that, me, my advisor, and the outside reader. And it felt like a very narrow field of inquiry. Um, and I turned to film because there was something so seductive about the combination of um, images and text or information put together. And it had the capacity to move you emotionally as well as intellectually. And I thought, oh, maybe this is the way to explore in a more lateral way, in a way more accessible to other people, these themes that I'm still really interested in, you know, these themes of well, why are we here and, you know, um, how do we learn things and, and who are we? Those kind of questions, those big, bigger questions. And so I think that once I started making documentaries and was so immediately engaged in a way that I knew I found my vocation in life. I've taught documentary classes and done lots of workshops and people always say to me, you know, how do you do it? How do you make a film? And I say, I can't answer that question. I mean, talking about documentary specifically, there is no one way to make a film. Nobody can teach you how to make a film. So if you're going to go to film school, you should go to film school to be surrounded by peers who are interested in the same thing, to be inspired by your peers, to find mentors who inspire you too, who you trust, who, whose voice you trust, and for resources. Because it's hard to have access, I mean, now it's a bit easier than it was then, but to have access to the equipment that you need to make a film. Use school for that. Don't go to school for somebody to tell you how to do something, because that's never going to happen. There are as many ways to make films as there are individuals making films. And you have to find your way by doing it. <laughs>